With the popularization of social media networks in the internet age, people have begun to use online platforms to keep in touch and interact with their friends and loved ones. The development of VoiceOver Internet Protocol, or VWAP, has made it even easier for us to experience real-time interactions over distances. Initially intended for business use, VoiceOver IP technology has become popular among the general population who use platforms such as Skype, instant messaging with video, and Apple FaceTime. Studies have shown that over 75% of, of college students have been in at least one long-distance relationship in their time in college or university. Um, and it's often because long-distance relationships happen because one person goes away to school somewhere. Um, you see a huge amount of people in long-distance relationships who are in the military, uh, professional athletes, um, offshore oil workers, or people that work in the oil sands in Alberta, for example. Um, so there's actually lots of cases where people are spread over distance because we now have these new ways of connecting over distance like Skype and other video chat systems. Uh, people are more apt to sort of be willing to sort of live that lifestyle because they think the technology is going to be there to support my relationship with this person. In general, what's been found is that compared to the workplace where people often sort of use video where they sort of see the person's head and it's about talking heads in the home and in family life it's about much more than that it's about what we call sharing everyday life so they people like to see sort of what others normally do at their home or wherever they are and like to share those experiences as opposed to just talking to them so for example grandparents like to see their kids or grandkids just kind of playing around in the living room couples like to just have video going so they can even just see their partner kind of doing the dishes or watching TV, kind of the really everyday mundane stuff that we think would be not be important to see. People really like to see it. Sometimes my friends and, uh, and I eat breakfast together. We enjoy our hobbies and passions together. Um, we will create together. Uh, we will watch movies together. I think the most surprising thing um, is the range of areas that people will use video chat in. We kind of expected, well, you know, they'll use it in their living room and maybe the kitchen, but people were using it in all sorts of places beyond that. If I would be able to uh, like walk around and talk to the same person, I would be able to show them what's around me. I think it would be way more helpful. Sometimes I would uh, even uh, do FaceTime when I was uh, close to the Eiffel Tower and uh, just uh, show where I am or from the fencing competition when uh, we're competing. I think. The biggest benefit is that it really creates this sense of presence um, from the remote person. Just knowing that you have this portal into their location at the, and that they are there somewhere actually really goes a long way to helping people feel close to one another. The advantage was that I was able to talk to him when I need to connect to him. I was able to reach out to him. But on the other hand, if I would be talking to him on Skype directly, I would not be able to communicate with other people. So it was kind of an opportunity cost. It was really hard in my first year of school when I wanted to meet, to go out and meet new people, but I couldn't. We don't have the luxury of being next to each other all the time or having the opportunity to do some of the other mundane things that couples do. The fact that you can't touch or be right beside that person is uh, the most difficult part of uh, long distance. I found a lot of difficulties when it came to like physical relationship. Like sometimes you just want to hug a person. If you're like an intimate relationship, you definitely want to, I don't know, more than just talking. Limitations, I think the biggest one is the size of the screens that people use nowadays for video chat. Uh, most people are restricted to this, you know, really small laptop screen. Um, you know, if they're lucky, they might have Skype running on their TV, which I think is actually really rare. Like, the main important thing is just to see the person. I don't really think that they should add anything. I, I think in the future, probably within the next five or ten years, so we're not going to see just small laptop displays. We're going to see entire walls that are portals into somebody's remote home. And so I think it's going to increasingly be the case that you don't have to sort of live with somebody to actually have their presence in your home. Video is going to mediate that. What is the future of voice over IP going to be like? And how will it continue to shape our relationships? As SFU professor Carmen Newstater says, the future is always an unknown. No one had predicted 10 years ago that we would be able to chat in real time over long distances. 
nor did we think that sites like Skype and Facebook would be so easily accessible. The only thing we can do is be open and adaptable to these evolving technologies. Thank you.